Hello everyone, welcome back. So in today's video, we are going to continue with some more problems from the from kinematics. Uh, so today's first problem is CYU8. Okay, so this is a great problem which deals with the concept of minimum transit time. So I'd recommend you guys watch, you know, my CYU1 to 5 video. So we are going to be using some concepts from those videos. Uh, so this question is going to use some concepts that we already dealt with in those videos, okay? I mean, you can still watch this video, but the ideas are pretty similar. So now let's read the problem statement. So, so we have a boy that starts from point A and passes point C of a track KBC as shown in the figure. So the portion AB is of length L and it is straight. And the portion BC is a semicircle of radius of small r. And it's given that small r is less than L. Okay, so basically the radii of the track is less than this length L. Now anywhere on the track, the modulus of the maximum acceleration of the boy is A. So we have to find the minimum transit time of the boy from A to C. So again, the question statement is pretty simple. A boy wants to go from A to C. So we want to figure out the way in which he can do that in the minimum possible time. Okay, so give this problem a good try guys and then check out the solution. Okay. Okay, so the basic concept is that if the, if I want to cover ABC distance the fastest, then I have to make sure that I cover the distance with the maximum possible speed. Uh, this is very straightforward because distance is nothing but speed multiplied by time. So if you want to minimize as the distance is fixed, if you want to minimize time, then the speed with which you are covering the path should be maximum. Okay, but the thing you need to keep in mind here is that there is there are constraints here. So for the first constraint is that the, the magnitude of the total acceleration of the boy, it must be less than or equal to the value provided in the question, which was A. And this should be true all the time. Okay, okay, so this is constraint number one. So some of you may have started the problem saying that, okay, so if I want to cover A to B the fastest, what I will do is I'll, so let's say this is the VT curve. So you'll start with zero velocity and, and you will keep accelerating with the maximum possible acceleration till the total distance AB is covered, right? So. So in that case, uh, we're just moving with constant acceleration from A to B, right? So the velocity V is going to be root of 2AL, okay? Just like square root of 2GH. This, is, this method is actually wrong, by the way. I'm explaining the wrong method first. So now we reach the semicircular track, okay? And the difference in the semicircular track is that we cannot keep accelerating the same way because the, we have to change the direction of the velocity vector now, right? And in order to change the direction of the velocity vector, we need a centripetal acceleration towards the center of the circle. Okay, and this is where the mistake in our mistake in doing the problem like this is. Okay, so let's say the boy is somewhere over here on the track and his velocity is obviously ta in the tangential direction and let's say it is V, okay? Radii of curvature is R. So what I'm trying to do is, I am trying to figure out what is the maximum possible speed with which the boy can run along this track. So for that, the thing is, we can say that the centripetal acceleration V square by R, this has to be maximum. Right, because if we if we run if we keep increasing our speed, our centripetal acceleration will increase, and we know the cap upper limit to the magnitude is small a, so this has to be less than or equal to a. The moment v becomes greater than this value, the boy won't be able to run on the track. Okay, so this is the same principle that we even use in the banking problems, right? So in order for the car to stay on track, there is a, a maximum possible velocity. If the car crosses that value, it will be pushed out of the track because the centrifugal force in that case is greater, right? Okay, so this is the important idea here. Okay, so basically the max allowed speed on the circular track, V max, is nothing but square root of AR. The guy cannot like in any condition cross this value, okay? So, so now let's come to here. So basically we, here we assume that the guy was ac accelerating from A to B. Now the issue with that is that the velocity becomes square root of 2AL. Now it's given in the question that L is greater than R. So this value is greater than square root of 2AR, which is not possible, right? Because the max speed itself is square root of AR. So therefore the thing is, this is not correct. So let's just get rid of this. Okay, so then the question is how do we actually solve it? So we figured out the maximum allowed speed on the circular track is square root of AR. And we also know that we have to cover the distance ABC with maximum speed. So BC distance is sorted because we'll just cover that distance with square root of AR, right? We know the maximum speed is square root of AR, we cannot cross that value. So the time taken to cross BC is simply uh, the distance which is pi R, right? Uh, divided by the speed which is square root of AR. So now we have to talk about the distance AB because that's a interesting part. Okay, so now we know one more information that when the boy reaches the point B, his velocity, his speed should be square root of AR. Okay, so now this is where a VT graph would help us a lot. So let's just draw a VT curve. Starting point is the origin, right? And our ending point is also fixed. So I'm going to draw a horizontal line and the this horizontal line correspond to V equals square root of AR. So this is where our graph should end. So let's just mark it with dotted lines, okay? 
so basically so it doesn't really matter how the graph looks like finally it should terminate along the square root of ar line Okay, so now the thing is guys, um, again, the concept remains same. We need to cover AB as fast as possible. So one possible way is you accelerate and uh, reach square root of AR and after that make it constant. But this, if you, th if you think a bit harder, this is not really the best way. The best way would be that you keep accelerating and now you have already achieved a very large amount of speed. Now you will, now we can decelerate and finally reach square root of AR. This would be faster because you're, you're covering more distance with greater speed. So that's the idea here so what we'll do is so we'll max out the accelerator and then we'll start decelerating and finally when we reach the point b our velocity needs to be square root of ar so that's why i ended in this horizontal line now the thing is the area under the curve which which represents the distance or displacement has to be equal to l because that's a length ab right okay so now all we have to do is find out the area and then equate it to l so let's say the maximum velocity is some v so basically this part is equal to has a magnitude of v so now observe this triangle guys so this line has a slope of a so if the perpendicular side is v then the base is going to be v divided by a so the area of this right triangle is going to be half bh which is half v by a times v which is v square by a so now we have to add the area of this trapezium over here so this side length is square root of ar and this side length is v okay so now we need the distance between these two parts for that what we can do is the height of this triangle is v minus square root of ar right so the base is going to be v minus square root of ar divided by a using the slope logic Okay, so now we can use the trapezium formula. So it will be half times distance between the two parallel sides, which is V minus square root of AR divided by A. And this multiplied by the sum of the parallel sides. So one side has a length of square root of AR and the other side has a length of V. And the total area under the curve should be equal to L. So this is A plus B into A minus B. So it will be V square minus AR. And if you observe, there is a V square by 2A added to another V square by 2A. So that will be V square by A. And then we have an AR divided by 2a so that is r by 2 so this should be equal to l so which means from here v square turns out to be this particular value so now guys we have figured out v so if we if we know v we know the total time t right so the total time from a to b is v by a plus this value so there is a 2v by a if you guys observe and then there is a minus of square root of r by a okay so now let's substitute the value of v into this equation okay so now uh, once we substitute it this is the value of the time that we get. So for the total time, we'll just add the time from A to B and the time from B to C. So this would be, okay, so once you substitute TBC as well, you'll get the final answer as this particular value. So yeah, that was it for this question. So, so basically the only thing here is that you need to keep in mind that you need to cover the path ABC with the maximum possible speed, but you need to also keep in mind the constraints. So, okay, and here the constraints was that we cannot cross a specific value for the circular track and and the acceleration magnitude or so yeah that was it for this question so now let's move on to the next question okay so this is question nine so we have a fun drive in an amusement park that runs between two spots that are two kilometers apart so you can think of this as a roller coaster that has to go from point a to point b and for safety reasons acceleration of the drive is limited to plus or minus four meter per second square so we can both accelerate and decelerate as well and the jerk which is defined as the rate of change of acceleration is limited limited to plus or minus one meter per second cubed. If the drive can achieve a maximum speed of 144 kilometer per hour, find the shortest transit time of the drive between the spots. Okay, so here we have a lot of constraints that is given. So the maximum possible allowed speed is uh, 144 kilometer per hour. So if you multiply it with five by 18, uh, you'll get it as 40 meters per second. So this 40 meter per second is a maximum allowed speed. Okay, so we cannot go above that. And the maximum allowed acceleration is four meter per second square. And the maximum allowed jerk is one meter per second cube. So again, just like the previous problems, we'll draw a VT graph, right? Because we, we need the information about the speed when we are talking about the transit time, right? So concept remains the same. We need to make sure that we travel the distance with the maximum possible speed. Okay, so here uh, again, guys, first we'll go full throttle max possible allowed value, right? We don't care at all about the speed limit or anything like that initially. As long as our velocity is less than 40, acceleration is less than four, we can go full throttle on the accelerator right but here if you observe the acceleration also does not have to be constant right even the acceleration has a rate of change and that is what they're calling as jerk so here we'll also increase the acceleration so so a little about graph so if the acceleration is constant then the velocity versus time plot is a straight line right and the curve will look something like this and if in in case da by dt is positive uh, it will be a curve that looks something like this okay 
so basically for curves that whose double derivative is positive has the radii of curvature in the upward direction let's not get into too much about graph so the curve will look something like this okay so initially our velocity time graph will look something like this so basically it will be curved a little bit okay so now the thing is uh, so e we are even setting the jerk uh, to be equal to one meters per second cubed which means our acceleration is also increasing with time so if i say da by dt to be one meters per second cubed acceleration is equal to t meters per second square so initially acceleration would be zero and the acceleration will keep increasing with time and if you observe at time t equal to four seconds acceleration would become four meters per second square so after that we have to set the jerk to zero so this so this curve can only be allowed till t equal to four seconds why because at t equal to four seconds the acceleration acceleration will become four meter per second square which is the maximum allowed acceleration so now we have reached the upper limit for acceleration so after this point we'll keep the acceleration constant constant at four meter per second square but uh, again after some time t let's say the velocity will become 40 meter per second so this is our velocity limit right so when the velocity becomes 40 meter per second we again have to set our acceleration the acceleration is zero because velocity again has an upper limit of 40 okay so now observe this straight line guys the slope of this line is four meter per second square right so if so let's try to find out this velocity over here it's a velocity at four seconds for that we can basically integrate this expression once right if acceleration acceleration is t which means velocity we can just integrate it'll be t square by two the displacement also we can integrate because we would require this because uh, we would have to find out the total area under the curve right so now if you put t equal to four here so the velocity at t equal to four seconds is going to be 16 by 2 which is 8 meters per second and the total distance covered is going to be 64 by 6 which is 32 by 3 meters okay so basically the area under this curve is 32 by 3 and the velocity at this point is 8 meter per second so now the height of this small triangle is 32 meters per second and the slope of this line is 4 so this base is going to be 8 so from 4 to 8 eight seconds we are going to accelerate at four meter per second square and the moment time t equals 12 seconds we'll move with constant speed okay so now the thing is guys uh, the question is still not done yet we won't keep moving with constant velocity because remember this is a ride that we wish to go from point a to point b so by so it will start with start at rest and it should also end at rest okay we, we don't want it to end at 40 meter per second we want it to end at rest so so let's take it to the next page okay will keep going at uh, 40 meter per second for the largest possible time and similar to the last problem what we'll do at the end is that we'll do exactly the same process that we did for accelerating the fastest right and and we'll decelerate using the same method okay so basically initial the initial stuff that we did for accelerating to 40 the fastest we'll do the same for decelerating to zero the fastest right so by symmetry all the areas are going to be the same right this area will be equal to the area over here which was 192 and this area will be same to same as this particular area so now let's talk about this region over here okay so let's say the time for which the ride was traveling with constant speed be delta t so now all we have to do is find delta t right so the area under that rectangle is going to be delta t multiplied by the height of the rectangle which is 40 this must be equal to the total distance which is 2000 minus the 192 which was already covered right so there was a 192 here we need to multiply we need to multiply it with 2 because another 192 is already covered here right similarly minus 2 times of 32 by 3 so from here as you guys can see we can solve for delta t okay and once you solve it the time delta t turns out to be approximately 64 seconds okay so here also the concept is pretty similar so we'll try to accelerate to the 40 as soon as possible and then we'll keep traveling for the largest possible duration with the largest possible time and we'll try to cover as much distance as possible with the maximum time and then we quickly and then we'll quickly decelerate to zero okay like I didn't make the graphs too nicely, but but I hope you guys got the idea. So yeah, that was it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please do like, share and subscribe. Yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching.